This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Clean Energy, uh, Think Tech Hawaii. My guest today is the Honorable Nick Dizon, CEO of Nidon Clean Energy and a sort of frequent visitor to these tables since he is a veritable encyclopedia of energy related information. And while I remember it, disclaimer, during the course of the show, Nick and I will be talking about particular brands of technology, and we do not endorse those brands. I do not, the state of Hawaii does not, Nick does not, and Think Tech Hawaii does not endorse these brands. There are competitors out there. Disclaimer. So, welcome to the show again, Nick. Oh, thanks, Howard. And there are, you are right at the cutting edge of such exciting stuff. You know, we live in revolutionary times. We think of the Russian Revolution, the French Revolution, guns going off in the streets, looting and everything. We are probably going through just as, no, we're going through a more profound evolution in terms of the explosion of electronic gadgetry of all sorts into our lives. Think of anybody under the age of 20 the only way you can get that iPhone out of their hands is to pry it out of their cold, dead fingers. <laughs> that did not happen 30 years ago. We didn't even know what an iPad was. So you are at the cutting edge of a subsection of this technological revolution. I, I would call it in general uh, storage. And integrating, as in energy storage, and integrating that with our electrical grid. As we know, Hawaii's goal is 100% clean energy by the year 2045, and we're actually ahead of schedule on that, believe it or not. With all the new high-rises going up in Kaka'ako, we're still ahead of schedule because of technologies like energy storage and a profound evolution of policies and procedures on the part of Hawaiian Electric. They get it now. The business is no longer as usual. We, we hardly even know what business as usual is anymore. So can you start by telling the audience something about uh, time of use? I'll give a little background. Time of use refers to the utility not selling us electricity at the same rate across the board, 3 p.m. to 3 a.m., but reducing the price of a kilowatt hour when there is excess capacity, when there's too much electricity being produced and the Hawaiian Electric is saying, please, please use more electricity now, I'll give it to you cheap. And then at, during our peak in the evening, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., they're saying, don't use so much, we're gonna charge you more. There's a disincentive and then there's, there's a normal time. And so time of use is coming. We, I think you work directly with uh, those engineers at Hawaiian Electric. So what is the, what is the state of uh, adopting time of use? Well, time of use currently has a pilot going on and, mm -hmm. and uh, they're offering their lowest rate of around 14 cents a kilowatt hour uh, of usage. So when you use power under that program, it's costing you about 14 cents a kilowatt hour. And that's running from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then the penalty comes in if you use, if you're in a program from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., it could go as high as 38 cents a kilowatt That's hour. That's a difference, yeah. And then there's a, a off peak mm -hmm. of 10 p.m. to um, 9 a.m. in the morning, mm -hmm. where it's really around 24 cents. It's not really. It's a. It's a couple cents uh, in, you know, to your mm -hmm. to your favor, mm -hmm. but not strongly. the The goal is to have people use power. Um, to charge batteries or to run whatever they're going to run during the sun hours when the PV across the island is pumping. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then um, you get the benefit of uh, whatever power you need at 14 cents. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you're trying not to use any power between 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, 
that's been a challenge because uh, the, a lot of the PV guys who are now adding storage, um, they're trying to figure out how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, most of the programs out available now are kind of like uh, package systems that you would get uh, that are maybe based around Tesla or uh, Samsung or LG. And those are not necessarily sized close enough to a customer's 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. to 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. load to guarantee that you can avoid that 38 cents mm -hmm. penalty. Uh, there's, so there's a lot of R&D going on yep. Uh, yep. In, the, in the renewable energy community on that. Mm -hmm. um, because once you tell a customer that they should go on TOU, if that customer hits that 38 cents, mm -hmm. they're going to want and they're yeah, going to want to blame somebody. Going to be happy, yeah. Right. So, so there's this big debate that people ask me: if I have X kilowatts of PV power on my roof, how many kilowatt hours should I be able to store down in, in my battery? And I, I've heard uh, di different answers for that. Five kilowatts on the roof, 10 kilowatt hours. No, 10 kilowatt hours wouldn't really do it, would it? For, for a typical residence? Well, you know, people come home mm -hmm. and they start turning on the microwave, the TV, mm -hmm. the stereo, the lights, the, the computer. The, the fridge is going the in and out. The fridge is opening yep, yep. and closing. Mm -hmm. um, they may be using ovens. Mm -hmm. um, how do you op account for the oven, right? What yes, circuit yes, is that yes, on? Yep. The oven is running at 220, 240. Your water heater is running mm -hmm, at 220, mm -hmm. 240. Which, which is a good argument <laughs> for solar water heating, That's by correct. the way. Yeah, yeah. So if you don't have all those things taken care of, um, you might find that 10 kilowatt hour of battery is insufficient mm -hmm, mm -hmm. between 5 and 9 or 10 p.m. Yeah. And if the solar production was poor that day, mm -hmm. um, you could find yourself more in a hole. Yep. And customers generally don't want to think about shedding load. Mm -hmm. They're not going to mm -hmm. come home, check to see how much sun they had, what the state of charge of the battery is against the load they customarily mm -hmm. use. Mm -hmm. So that's a challenge on the design side. And there's a lot of math involved. Yep. Yep. And the math includes variables, i.e. how much sun you did or did not have, Mm -hmm. How much load you use uh, between 5 and mm -hmm. 10 p.m., for example, uh, what devices you use for how long. And once you calculate that out, that might be expensive in terms mm -hmm. of the, the amount of battery you buy. Yep. And then yep. you might find out that you actually don't have enough PV to recharge all that battery mm -hmm. during the day. If you already own PV and you want to add battery after the fact, um, uh, it's going to be expensive, and the return on investment may be very far out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is uh, the argument that I, I keep on having. I had a guest recently who said, no, 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 he, he can solve it, but a little bit on the controversial uh, side. But, but j just to make a plug for solar water heating again, that's a real, because the minute you get home from home, work and school, somebody's going to want to take a shower, you have to wash dishes. Use that nice solar energy. That's, that's a big battery there. It's an 80-gallon battery of hot water that you're sitting on there. Well, and thermal to thermal is <clears throat> more efficient. A lot of people have thought maybe we can use those uh, on-demand hot water heaters, mm -hmm. except those will suck a battery dry real mm -hmm, quick. Mm -hmm. And the, the inrush current that happens from firing one of those things up, you really don't want to have that on battery. No. So truthfully, for TOU to work, uh, the system for the, for the home or the business that's going to go on TOU needs to be designed to work with TOU. So that's mm -hmm. the size of the renewable energy, the size of the battery against a known charge discharge profile to make that TOU safely assured to, you know, to not hit the 38 cents. Which would mean a lot of monitoring up front. You'd have to stick all kinds of monitors, and this is just residential, a single family residence, all kinds of monitors. When does your oven go on? When, how, when does your fridge really consume? And then that's your model, and then you can size accordingly, but that, that all costs money, and that's not a guarantee either. 
That's right. The yeah. upfront work to figure that out mm -hmm. um, requires a skill set that a lot of uh, companies don't currently have. Mm -hmm. And once you have that information, then your selection of the equipment and how you set it up and how you use the software that comes with that equipment, be it uh, uh, from SMA, the Sunny Island, or from uh, Outback, or from Schneider, or whichever, or, or Solar Edge, whichever mm -hmm. battery inverter system you get, or inverter with battery system you get, the programming parameters vary from one to the next. And you need to be intimately familiar with that programming mm -hmm. to leverage it mm -hmm. uh, and to get the best use of yeah. it so that yeah. you're, yeah. you're not going to have the customer start buying at 30 mm -hmm. cents a kilowatt hour. Yeah, so where the normal solar battery installer might just need, say, a couple of years of education from Honolulu Community College, it sounds like somebody doing these calculations is going to have to ratchet his education up to a whole new order here. And currently it's not being taught in any of the schools. Mm -hmm. I mean, the NABCEP certification doesn't uh, co cover this. There are no colleges or schools here in Hawaii and throughout most of the USA that teach this. Yeah. yeah. Because it requires a single person to know and or coordinate multiple disciplines. We're talking electrical, we're talking chemical, mm -hmm. uh, there, there's a bunch of things that, that go on. And then it's, it's understanding what SEN DNI is, what kind of PV panels you're using, what your string going to be mm -hmm. on DC mm -hmm. coupling mm -hmm. or whether it's AC coupling. And then it ties to what kind of inverter you're going to use and whether the programming mm -hmm. variety in the inverter mm -hmm. will match the battery that you're putting on and that it's sized to uh, handle the charging yep. of the solar and or electrical and the load and charge discharge profile. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of, each one of those represents its mm -hmm. own math formula. Wow. And when you tie all those in, it turns, in, in Nidon's case, it turns into a three chalkboard long formula. So like yeah. if you go into any public school and you look how long that chalkboard is, like mm -hmm. what, four by ten feet? Yep, yep, yep. We fill up Three of those. Okay, well, on that cheery note, we have to take a, a break. But let's uh, continue the discussion on a much larger scale. I've got in mind, say, a uh, military base. The mm -hmm. military is really interested. Okay. And maybe we can ratchet this up and, and have it be more hopeful here. So, Think Tech Hawaii Code Green, my guest, Nick Dizon, CEO of Need on Clean Energy, back in a minute. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Greetings, it's me, Angus McTech, the longtime host and star of Hibachi Talk. Think Tech is important to our community because we bring all kinds of cool ideas and I bring gadgets to the, to the show. So you gotta watch it for sure. But for the first time, Think Tech Hawaii is participating in an online web-based fundraising campaign to raise $40,000. Give thanks to Think Tech. We'll run only during the month of November and you can help. Please donate what you can that Think Tech in Hawaii can continue to be public awareness and promote civic engagement through free programming like mine, and I'm in charge. I've already made my donation, and it's really hard to get this Scotsman to make a donation, but I already did. Please send in your tax-deductible contribution by going to this website, thanksforthinktech.cosbox.com. Say that three times fast. Closing. On behalf of the community enriched by ThinkTech, Hawaii's 30 plus weekly shows, thank you and we're mahalo for watching ThinkTech and your gen generosity. Let your wing gang free wherever you be. Aloha! Good afternoon again, Howard Wig, Code Green Hawaii, my guest, Nick Dazon, CEO of Nidon Clean Energy. Nick was just painting a rather gloomy picture of how time of use could apply at the residential level, but then we came up with some very simple solutions if, if this does come to pass. A typical residents could put their dishwasher, clothes washer, and dryer 
on a timer so that they go on between, say, 10 a.m. and uh, 3 p.m. and make you suck up some of that uh, really inexpensive energy. And then Nick said also, cook with a crock pot so that it's all, the food is all nice and warm waiting for you. When, when you get home, you don't have to use the stove, much less the oven. The oven is a real, real uh, draw. But let's apply this time of use pricing, because I know it's coming, to something as big as, say, a military base. A military base might have you know, a few acres of PV to feed into the grid. How would a, a large institution maybe make use of uh, t time of use? Well, the, the challenge has been what energy storage pencils out on that big a scale. Mm -hmm. And it can, of course, economies of scale kick in. If you've got the land available for the photovoltaic array and you have uh, a known load that's mm -hmm. got a predictable usage pattern, which uh, a commercial entity should have or a military entity should have, mm -hmm. and then you slice off this, that segment of power that you want to be on TOU. Mm -hmm. um, you might identify a building, um, you know, because you want to have a defined load. So it's at the meter where you're going to start uh, have this knowledge and this interchange to make the TOU work. So once you've sliced off the load that you have, mm -hmm. if land isn't an issue, and of course, land being the, well, the la land being oh, land, uh, like yeah. if the military has the yeah, land, sure, or the state yeah. has the mm -hmm. land, or the county has the land mm -hmm. for a county, state, or federal building or facility to start doing TOU. Oh yeah, it's definitely possible. Mm -hmm. um, and their load profiles tend to be very predictable. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the other thing is. Uh, a lot of these military and, and county and state facilities actually don't have as much going on between 5 and 10 mm -hmm, p.m. Mm -hmm. So if they don't have as much going on, then the amount of battery you need to, to cover that under TOU would be lower. Yeah, so then yeah. it calls into the idea that uh, what if you were able to have that battery for the county, state, or federal cover even more, mm -hmm. like say from 5 p.m. to 9 a.m. And then all the power that building's getting during the day is at 14 cents. Mm -hmm. I, as a taxpayer, would really like to see something like that happen. Mm -hmm. And if they've done all the other things that you've been, you've been talking about for years, LED lights, Energy Star appliances, all this energy efficiency, um, then whatever they are buying is going to be at 14 cents. Mm -hmm. And then the amount of PV and battery they need is going to be less. Mm -hmm. So that's a, you know, that's a very useful yeah, yeah, uh, application, yeah. especially for us taxpayers who got to finance mm -hmm. the county, state, and federal government. Yeah, that, that's an excellent example. I'm thinking of the office building I work in. Uh, Seven o'clock in the morning, there's not much going on, but by eight o'clock, there's quite a bit going on. So you're we're in the intermediate range there. And then the peak is through the afternoon, but by five o'clock, people are filing out of the office. And you could have a policy of boom, five o'clock, that AC goes off. End of story, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, a lot of buildings in downtown, the, uh, they're on a central cooling loop. And the central mm -hmm. cooling loop is, you know, they, they generally shut it down at around 6 p.m. after mm -hmm. all the office workers are gone. Uh, for them as well, and maybe, you know, this is getting a little out there, but mm -hmm. there is the community solar program mm -hmm. they're still mm -hmm. working on. Yep. If the community solar program for a condo or an office building or a hotel was invoked, then all of a sudden those buildings may be able to leverage TOU. Because mm -hmm. um, that's not a, they don't call it wheeling, but it's sort of kind of like wheeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if, if, but if the net results is, your electrical cost for the daily operation of your nonprofit, your your business, is cut down to 14 cents a kilowatt hour during mm -hmm. the day. That's uh, that's hard to beat. Yeah, yeah. And it's we're not punishing Hawaiian Electric by doing this. Hawaiian Electric is trying to smooth out its load, and it knows it's headed for 100% clean energy. And the, one of the main 
issues we have to deal with right now is called the duck curve, where the demand for electricity during the middle of the day goes way down like a duck's back. That's because of all the PV. And then as soon as the sun goes down, here comes the duck's head way up here. And they've got to smooth that thing out. Well, it's dangerous, actually. I mean, Hawaiian Electric uh, is w stuck with a really old distribution network mm -hmm. that was never designed to handle all this seesaw action going mm -hmm. on during the day from all this PV. And they have major parts of their grid where the amount of PV production is two and a half times the actual <laughs> load usage yeah. of, that, yeah. of that area. So to having two and a half times the amount of electricity bouncing around in a circuit mm -hmm. with nowhere to go is dangerous. This yeah. is why yeah. Yeah. these days the electricians we work with, they have to be aware of arc flash. Mm -hmm. 10 years ago, we weren't worried about arc flash. So arc, arc flash suits, arc flash breakers, those are being required now because there's power looking for a path to ground. Mm -hmm. and the last place we want it to be is one of us, or, yes, uh, yes, or yes. one of the contractors, yeah, or yeah. like anybody. Mm -hmm. But right now, that is a, a serious situation. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned something that I'm not familiar with, customer self-supply plus. What in the world is that? Okay, the, the um, PUC has been working with Hawaiian Electric to come up with programs to replace the old NEM. Uh, the old retail NEM's gone, and net, now the net, wholesale, net energy, the net metering. energy metering, mm -hmm. right. So net energy metering, as we knew it in the past, is, is gone. You, nobody can get it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you can get uh, customer self-supply plus. So that's like um, net energy metering, but you're only allowed to export to the grid uh, if Hawaiian Electric thinks there's room to take it. Mm -hmm. So what, what's unclear in that scenario, so there's no battery in customer mm -hmm. grid supply uh, plus, okay? Um, what's not known is what's the guaranteed amount of power you would sell back to the utility under that, because it would be at the wholesale rate, which means that the return on investment might be too far out. Then there's customer grid supply plus, or what they call smart export. So that's a battery system that, um, with photovoltaics that is allowed to export to the grid in the inverse of TOU. So into the 5 p.m. to 9 or 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. peak, uh, Tico would like to be, accept that power at that point. It's smart from Hiko's point of view because during the day, that PV was not pumping power into the grid, driving mm -hmm. uh, that grid instability worse. It was put it, being put into a customer paid for battery, mm -hmm. which now the customer gets to benefit from that excess mm -hmm. power mm -hmm. because they can sell it to the utility, albeit at wholesale. Mm -hmm. So if the customer has designed a system that effectively um, makes them qualify for T TOU, Theoretically, on a bad sun production day, they could recharge their batteries prior to smart export mm -hmm. at 14 cents and then turn around and sell it back to the utility at 14 mm -hmm. cents. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's a zero-sum game, but at least you're not losing. Yeah, yeah. And that brings to mind uh, EVs, electric vehicles. Those batteries in those EVs are big. And if the EV owner wants to enter into a, an agreement with Hawaiian Electric like this, could the EV battery also be a source of emergency power? Well, that's been discussed a lot, um, mm -hmm. trying to use Leafs and Tesla's unused battery power to sell back to the grid. Um, both the PUC and HECO are looking at that. Mm -hmm. Part of the problem, though, is they all use different battery technologies. They all use mm -hmm. different ways of charging the batteries. And they generally didn't design the Leaf or the Tesla or the Volt yeah. to necessarily export, mm -hmm. right? And that export would have to be, at this point, through the car charger out to, out to the grid through the, the meter. Mm -hmm. And the equipment and the methodology by which that could be done safely 
that hasn't been developed yet. Okay, so this is still in the future. That yeah, I mean, the talk stage. there's a lot of talk about that, yeah. but even the way charging is done for a leaf is different from a, a C-Max hybrid pluggable or a Prius pluggable or a Volt mm -hmm. or, or, you know, or a Tesla. They all don't behave the same. Even though they use yeah. level two chargers, it doesn't mean that what's happening behind the scenes, because each one is designed with chargers and software customized to that particular Good package. Good point, yep. And some mm -hmm. of that's classified or, I don't know, company yeah. proprietary. They don't I, necessarily I, want their competitor yeah. to see how it is they, they set up their battery packs and charge it. That's understandable to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we don't have a lot of time, but I did want to touch on a subject we were deep into when you were last on board, and that is the Aquion battery. I think you were on on day one. On day two, Aquion announced uh, Chapter 11. Yeah, yeah. it was pretty <laughs> yeah. amazing. We were actually at the BIA show, and the day, I think we were, I was on this show the day before the first day of the BIA mm -hmm. show. So the we talked about aqua, which is salt water batteries, which are uh, the most, the safest, most inexpensive battery to use, and, and we're using those now. We're yeah. still deploying those. Mm -hmm. And and salt water does not catch on fire. Salt water does not explode. And it's yeah, and it's yeah. not um, a hazardous chemical mm -hmm. either. Yeah. So yeah, yeah uh, it you know it spills or somebody hits it. We're not we're mm -hmm. not uh, in a dangerous situation. Well, the next day, <laughs> uh, the first day of the show, I get a call at 11 a.m. Um, <laughs> Aquion had filed Chapter 11. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we scrambled and, uh, you know, it, it wasn't an existential threat to us by any, by any means, mm -hmm. but obviously it caused a crimp in how we were proceeding. Well, recently, uh, just a couple months ago, um, Aquion has a new owner. Um, they announced they came out of Chapter 11 and they're saying that they'll be back online and pro with production and sales through the sales channel by April of 2018. Now, mm -hmm. we don't know if that's gonna be us or what, how that's gonna work across the world and, or in the US. Obviously, we're looking forward to seeing how that works. But having said that, there are other battery technologies Absolutely. that we had been testing and looking at from long ago that we are deploying now. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, we still are deploying Aquion batteries in the channel and with uh, some of the, the other channel members, we are holding some of those in reserve for warranty. Although, to date, we've had no need to do a warranty replacement on batteries we've uh, designed in on a system. And on that very cheery note, we <laughs> need the bid fund to do. Obviously, Nick, we're going to have to have you back in another uh, six <laughs> months or something. And you will have a new story to tell. This is a, such a rapidly evolving field and in my humble opinion each year storage is going to be in a more and more and more important technology in achieving 100 percent clean energy by the year 2045 this is howard wig code green think tech away nick design president of need clean energy thank you so much nick and we bid you fond adieu